Unidentified flying objects, UFOs. For decades, people in the Pacific Northwest have seen things in the sky that they can't explain. We saw this immense object in the field over there with lights that were spinning, and it was something we had never seen before. It took up most of this valley, and it was just hovering. It was just hovering, and we were mesmerized. Gloria Bonacci and her friend Mary saw something too. We were walking along, and uh, all of a sudden we looked up and there was an object. It seemed to come out of nowhere. And of course, we were scared and we ducked down in some tall grass behind a fence line. It was football shaped, it had red lights. All of a sudden it went up and horizontally it went toward the high bluff and it just kind of went below the bluff and then seemed to just go really fast and be gone. Susan and Gloria both live on Whidbey Island, not far from the Navy base. They don't know each other, but on separate occasions in the 1960s when they were kids, they say they saw something in the skies above the island that neither could identify. Whatever they saw, Whidbey Island resident and former NASA scientist Dick Haynes asked that you please not call them UFOs. It, it begs the question, unidentified flying object. We don't know their objects yet, right? Uh, do they fly? Well, some do and some don't, right? And they're certainly unidentified, so we like the U part. So we say the UAP is a better way of, of presenting this idea. It's aerial and it's a phenomenon, and that's all we know. Haynes grew up near Seattle. He worked as a NASA scientist, and though he was skeptical about unidentified aerial phenomena, he eventually founded a group that collects anonymous reports from pilots. I heard these stories from pilots that just blew me away and they forced me to leave that hypothesis that it was all controlled variables and so forth. It was something totally different. And that's what got me started. The Northwest has a long history of unidentified phenomena, and people around Seattle saw things before that more famous Roswell incident in New Mexico. A pilot named Ken Arnold famously coined the term flying saucer when he saw a group of silvery disks in the skies near Mount Rainier way back on June 24, 1947. And it was three days before that when something called the Maury Island Incident took place on Puget Sound near Des Moines. Steve Edmiston, along with Scott Schaefer, made a film about it. On June 21, a man named Harold Dahl, who has a 50-foot boat, he goes to a dock in Tacoma and he picks up two dock workers. He also brings his son, Charles, also brings the family dog, Sparky, and they're all on the boat and they go three miles and they're just off Maury Island when they see, allegedly, six flying disks. They describe them as round uh, and hollow like a donut. But then there's this explosion and according to the accounts, the explosion is almost like a molten lava. They refer to it as slag. And it's pelting down, and it's right above the boat. Harold's son is burned badly on his arm. The boat's being badly damaged. So they are so frightened, they take that 50-foot boat, and they actually race it up on the beach on Maury Island to get off the boat and hide in cliffs that were there. The objects flew away, and the men returned to Tacoma. They agreed not to tell anyone what they had seen. The next day, Edmiston says, a mysterious man dressed all in black showed up at Dahl's house. That man took Dahl to a diner where he encouraged Dahl to remain silent. You shouldn't tell anyone else what you saw. Dahl eventually claimed the whole incident was a hoax, but Steve Edmiston thinks Dahl was just tired of not being believed. What does Steve Edmiston believe? This is not something to dismiss as a hoax. It at least belongs over here. If nothing else, it belongs over here with the Roswells and the other great stories. Now to Burien, where the community has embraced the Maury Island incident and Stephen Scott's film and created an annual celebration inspired by what happened. This is the Bufo, Burien UFO Festival. So anything can happen. Tonight in Burien, it's like aliens, everything. It's pretty much a day for the community to come out and celebrate their weirdness. show here before a couple of years ago and uh, I love Burien. It's just one of my favorite little towns. Though she's dressed in a funny costume, does Lorraine believe in UAPs? I'm gonna put it this way, I don't not believe. Okay, I would never not believe. Back on Whidbey Island, what does Gloria Bonacci believe? I suppose really before I saw this with my own eyes, I really didn't believe. But after I saw that, you know, I kind of think there probably is 
things that we don't know about. Dick Haynes was one of the first people to take Gloria Bonacci and Susan Gonzalez seriously. When I interviewed each of them separately, the two groups had never met, didn't know about each other's sightings, and asked them to draw a picture of what they saw, they were drawing pretty much the same object. What does Susan Gonzalez believe? We're not crazy, and this really did happen, and it really did happen on this little wonderful island. It's not craziness. They're here. They've been here a long time. And what do you believe? Have you ever seen a UAP? Until there's scientific proof, it comes down to each of us to imagine the possibilities. Watch City Stream Thursday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel. Or get video on demand and podcasts anytime at seattlechannel.org.